Hello, I'm Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for the Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me today Ian Patterson, Head of Studio for Lincoln Network. We're going to talk about a project he's been working on, School of Hoop. Hope you enjoy the conversation. It's a really timely project. There's a lot of discussion about school choice. Um, a lot of parents obviously are considering uh, what's going on with the schools nationwide, um, are really concerned on the local level what's going on with their school. So Ian, welcome. And tell me a little bit about what School Hoop is and how it can help parents. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Uh, I'm sorry I'm not wearing a, a button down shirt, but you know, you have to hold up the style end for, for both of us on this podcast today. <laughs> Do my best. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, we've been working on School of Hoop for about a year now with our partners, the Miles Foundation in Tarrant County, Texas. And this is a school discovery platform. Um, we decided that there was a major gap in the market here where parents uh, had a need or a desire for school choice, but had a very difficult time finding options that were within reach. And so we set out to create a platform that would allow them to discover new schools nearby that they weren't con previously considering. Um, and some of the research that we used to uh, determine this need found that around 80% of parents could only name their own school. They couldn't name any other type of school. We found that a lot of parents had misperceptions, uh, misconceptions about charter schools, for example, that charters cost a lot of money. We heard that over and over again through this research. Um, they also radically overestimated the cost of private options and they were not even aware of or considering options like micro schools now affectionately referred to maybe not affectionately referred to as pods learning pods during the pandemic era uh, or homeschooling and so we've now uh, over the last year been able to build up a really exciting platform that is in beta in tarrant county texas works through uh, for kindergarten through fifth grade at this time and uh, matches parents personally with schools based on their child's interest, their needs, the commute length, even checking along their daily work commute. Uh, and it matches them with everything from micro schools to homeschooling opportunities, to hybrid options, to low cost private options. There's all kinds of great stuff in there that's really not available anywhere else. And we've tried to take a really unique angle on this that serves the needs of parents instead of most solutions seemingly being very school centric instead of parent or child centric. So that's what we set out to do. All right. Focus on the customer. So um, you had mentioned um, uh, that you were doing some uh, additional cost analysis of what um, what's being spent, I believe, per, per, per pupil in different um, school districts. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's right. So this is, as you mentioned, really timely right now. A lot of parents are looking uh, urgently for new school options for their children. A recent survey, I think it was funded by the uh, Gates Foundation, found that 40% of parents had unenrolled their children from the school that they were planning to attend this year because of reopening plans. So this was a trend that we identified going back to research that we conducted in May and we published in June, predicting that up to 43% of parents were likely to withdraw their kids from their existing school and switch schools because of this Goldilocks effect of wanting more safety or less safety, whether depending on whether they felt that that was justified. And as a result, schools were likely, no matter what direction they turned, to see a massive exodus of parents. So uh, in light of that, School Hoop is really timely. We also have this other project that you mentioned that's focused on helping parents understand uh, funding and where school funding is going and how much money is being spent on their nearby school, whether it's a charter or a zone school. So there's uh, the ESSA law or ESSA mandated that states need to report per pupil spending at a school level. This has never been collected before. The data has never been available before. And about 30 states, about 40 states now have reported that data for the first time. It's become available. But what we discovered in working with our Lincoln policy team and Dan Lips over there, who's got a lot of history working in the area of school choice, was that this data was very difficult to find, uh, that it was very difficult to analyze and that it was not getting really any attention so far, both from policymakers, school districts themselves, and parents. So we set out to create the first ever 
database, an easy accessible way to see how much your local school is spending. Because uh, we know from surveys and polls done regularly by EdChoice, for example, that most Americans tend to radically underestimate how much their local schools are spending on the uh, child's education. And at this time, it's really important because there's a tremendous amount of financial burden and time and energy burden that's being placed back uh, over on the parents uh, and caretakers of children as opposed to on the public school districts. So right now with remote learning and reduced instructional hours, it means that parents need to be at home, their work, if it's out of the home, uh, if they are deemed quote unquote an essential worker and they're a grocery store employee or something like that, they now have a tremendous additional burden to provide childcare, even if their child is on Zoom meetings or on remote learning through their public school district. But none of that funding is following the, the student to where they're spending more time, which is at home. So we view this as an opportunity to be a conversation starter. Um, it's a, right now a proof of concept that we see uh, expanding really quickly. We're talking with partners about that now to help make this uh, available to researchers and policymakers. But then eventually we, we really see this being something that can be a conversation starter for parents too, who may think to themselves, you know, I'm in pain financially right now because the funding is not there for me to help carry this extra burden, uh, this extra cost of having my child at home uh, more of the time. And it's an opportunity for them to learn about, oh, my school district might be spending $15,000, even $20,000. Some districts like District of Columbia might be even closer to twenty-five dollars or $30,000. How come none of that funding is following the pupil where they're actually being educated more, being cared for more, and opportunity to advocate for funding mobility or things like that as part of that project? All right. Well, even $5,000 if uh, it followed the pupil could help um, somebody who's homeschooling quite a bit. That's right. And we have seen that a little bit. A few states have freed up some of that money to follow the people more. So Oklahoma is one of those. I believe South Carolina just recently passed uh, a law. I don't know if it's actually been signed into law or whether it's just passed the legislature um, that uh, apparently causes more of the money to follow a student, regardless of whether they're going to be uh, homeschooled and put into a private school. Um, put into a different type of school like that. Uh, and so that's it's not on the scale of $5,000 per pupil, certainly. Sure. Um, it's it's more down towards the scale of you know, $1,000 to $1,500 or so. But as you mentioned, every little bit helps. Most homeschooling families that we speak to spend about $1,000 per year on their curriculum, on their uh, materials and supplies and things like that. The costs can be considerably offset for a family like that for those types of costs of homeschooling. And uh, that's a meaningful improvement. I think at the very least, uh, what you're talking about doing is providing transparency to what the funding for per pupil is by um, at least by state, if not county by county, district by district. And that's uh, more, more informed, better informed parents. Um, that can't be a bad thing. It's a very important pivot that we're trying to influence here as part of a larger philosophy that this space has been very school centric. It's been very wonkish and data centric. And it's been a lot of the solutions have been sort of by researchers for researchers. And we really acknowledge that's an important area. But ultimately, the people with the intuitive sense and the ability to guide the education of their child, the person that's most capable of doing that is a parent. And so we want to try to build more solutions like School of Hoop that aren't data centric, that focus on parent intuition. So just coming back to School of Hoop, one of the things sure. that's really unique about it uh, is that other school research solutions that are out there focus on a lot of data and a lot of metrics, uh, ratios and pie charts and graphs and percentage points down to a single percentage of things like racial or ethnic breakdown or discounted lunch ratios or all kinds of things like that. And what we found in our experience of showing these to teachers, I'm sorry, to parents, is that they would go to these sites, they'd look at them and they would go, ooh, look at all this data. And then they would get quieter and quieter and quieter over the course of the test. And they would finally go, huh, wow, this is a lot of information. I'm really not sure what to do about this. They close the browser and then they go ask a friend who most likely is in the same system with the same assumptions as them. And so what we tried to do was really focus on how do we make this tailored 
tailored towards parent intuition and their gut knowledge of what their child needs, what the problems and opportunities are, and build a tool around that instead of around data that may not be very reliable. It may not be very actionable for parents. Well, if we can do it for real estate, which there's a variety of different real estate tools that, that have popped up over the last five years, we could certainly do it at least the beginnings of what you're talking about for schools, uh, which is primarily the reason why people move it in the first place is to find a better school district for their kids. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's, what's the next uh, step, do you think? You were talking about the next step for um, data collection, sharing that information um, more on a regulatory and probably um, researcher side. What's the next step you think for um, School Hoop in Tarrant County or maybe beyond? Well, for School Hoop, we're looking to scale it up very quickly. So we've gotten some degree of impact here. Parents are giving us a lot of good feedback about what we're doing. We certainly have room for improvement and in terms of our matching and other things that we're doing, but we've got a lot of good initial signals and we're making fast improvements. Now what we're looking to do is quickly expand to help more parents. So the pool of parents in Tarrant County is a, it's not a small, county by any means but we want to expand the number of grades we're going to go to pre-k up to 12th we're also going to expand our service area because of the virtual school move and transition here um, we do a lot to help match you with better virtual schools whether it's a virtual charter or a virtual private school and these are a really great opportunity because many schools zone schools that have been uh, sort of, they've been sort of forced into doing distance learning. And that means that they don't necessarily have the training, the expertise, the technical tooling, anything like that to get up to speed quickly on how to do this. It's actually quite involved. It takes a lot of experience to know how to do distance learning well, as a lot of parents are finding out as their kids right. are frustrated with daily Zoom meetings for hours. Yeah. Um, some of these virtual charters and other organizations, uh, they have 10 years plus of doing online learning in a way that is much more empowering of the student and of the parent and much better for them. And so we're positioned to help statewide through Texas and then branch out to multiple states, help parents realize that uh, not all virtual learning is created equal. Not all virtual schools are created equal. That the amount of experience, expertise, and ability that these schools have really matters. And we can help parents find a better alternative that maybe it's still virtual learning, but it's gonna be vastly easier and better on their, for their child uh, and for the teachers that are involved there. You know, We have a lot of compassion for the fact that teachers are in a very difficult situation right now. And these virtual schools that specialize in this are generally speaking a lot better experience for those teachers too, because they feel supported, they have the training and tools to do uh, their work in a better way. And so that's uh, important to us as well. Exciting. Well, I can't wait to hear more. Um, uh, let's circle back maybe in a month, month and a half and see how things are going. And uh, this has been Lincoln Short. So thank you very much for uh, joining us, Ian. Thanks, Sean, appreciate it. Cheers. So. Uh...